welcome to episode 416 of Good Luck High Five. That's right, you're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play or get excited about Magic the Gathering. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And in a metal band, you can just call me the better shredder who loves cheddar. Wow. I shred on the guitar and I eat cheese. Yeah. Oh, I thought that you were a mentor to the Ninja Turtles. Oh, well, you know, that uh, that too. Yeah, I mentored that's, Shredder. That's... And the martial arts. Yeah. That the Ninja Turtles do, which I don't know oh. which one it is. Um, I feel like they all do a different one, but I'm just thinking <laughs> of their weapons being different. No, they probably all do the same. Shredder is the... Big mouse who helps them, right? <laughs> we have good luck. High five has lost two hundred followers. <laughs> He's a rat. He's a rat. Yes. but I mean, a mouse is a nicer <laughs> word for a rat. <laughs> Yeah, he's a nice mouse. He's a nice mouse. He's who a nice helps mouse them. teacher who helps him out. Okay, who's the bad guy in Ninja Turtles? Yeah, I don't know. Actually, is there just one bad guy, or is there a lot of bad I feel guys? Like there's, but there's like one big one. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, then. I don't remember that far back in my child memory. Fair Thanks. enough. I didn't watch much Ninja Turtles, obviously. The theme song can't be beat. Yeah. Except by David the Gnome, which no, David themes, the Gnome? no theme song can beat that one. Yeah, David. You don't know the David the Gnome theme song? I don't even know what I'm, David the Gnome is. I'm pretty sure. I've t- I'm pretty positive I've talked about it on this show. Absolutely. <laughs> I would remember you <laughs> referencing a show called David the Gnome because oh, that's not a real show. It's so cute. It's the best show. Little gnomes in a fairy forest and they go around and do gnome things. They ride on the back of a fox. Very small. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> anyway. I feel like you made this show up. <laughs> Anyways, yes. <laughs> I could go on about children's TV show things yeah. for a long time, but... But there's other stuff to talk about. We have so much call time to get we through. We have so much call time to talk about on this yeah. episode. We're going to open our box of sick uh, swag Check that this Wizards out. of the Coast sent us. Yeah. We're going to talk about all of the cards that have been previewed thus far. We're going to tell you our own preview card. Yeah, we got two preview we cards. we have two preview cards coming at you. Very excited. And uh, we're going to go over the first episode of the Kaldheim story. Yes, there's tons of story packed in Kaldheim. I mean, yeah. when the, it was all revealed to us in a special stream from, from Wizards on the 7th, I was like... There's a lot of lore here. I was ch- checking my watch, you know, yeah. and you're like, what? How, how much more? Oh, there's a lot <laughs> packed into call time. So we're going to have a little story time with Megan. Yeah, really, really exciting stuff. Set drops on the 28th. So yeah. we're in major hype town territory right now. The train has pulled into the station, toot toot. And uh, <laughs> beep, beep. we're emptying that train into your brains. Yes. Yeah. Forward the only way it can go. It's very, it's very true. All right. Before we do any of that, yes. though, big thank you to all of our supporters on patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Yes, thank you to everyone who supports the show over on Patreon. Yeah. Into this new year, which it's yet to be seen <laughs> if it's going to improve on the last one. You know. Maybe it'll just be more of the same. Uh, <laughs> you, never, you never thought 2021, you like cannot possibly, cannot possibly get possibly. worse. Oh, boy. You know, in 2020, it's like, oh. Beverage. Oh, Have I got oh. some surprises for you? Thank you all so much for keeping us uh, buoyant like a Viking ship yes. on the stormy seas of everything that every year brings to <laughs> us. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Um, shout out to, to renewing patron Emmett, uh, who rejoined the Patreon this month, uh, or in the last week, I mean. Thank you so shout much, out, Emmett. Um, buddy. If- if you want to be like Emmett, you can go over to patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. Take you two minutes yeah. and throw a dollar at our faces. We feel it every time you donate. Yep. Pink smack right there in the face. <laughs> <laughs> We're also going to say thank you to Card Kingdom, one of our amazing sponsors. You can head over to cardkingdom.com slash GLHF to get anything you need for your magical existence, including pre orders of Caldheim. That's right. The top place to pre order Caldheim. It will get to you as speedily as is possible oh, yeah. these days. Big time. Um, Um, Because they are excellent at customer service. So no better place if you're looking to get your hands on this rocking new set. Yeah. um, And you can say good luck high five and they'll put a token or a sticker in your order. So you get some free stuff as well. Um, Just everything call time. Think Card Kingdom. They've uh, they've always been a fantastic company. We're proud to work with them. And if you need to buy yourself a box so you can get the sweet, sweet smell of a cracked pack live in your face in person. Yeah. Hey, they're there for you. They're there for you. 
All right, Maria, should we kick it off with our preview cards? Yes, let's do yes. it. Okay, because do you know what? I was like, we should open this box, but then I forgot that we had preview cards yeah. that we can bring to you. So why not? So why not? Uh, yeah, we got actually not one, but two preview cards, which I'm That's super right. excited for. Uh, they, they're, in our, they're in our normal yes. emails. Uh, we've got to find them. <laughs> You know what? I can find anything I put my mind to. But uh, yeah, we're um, these these two cards. I'm, yes, we've got it. Uh, oh, they are the art's great. They um, they are giants. Giants from the realm of frost giants, uh, or frost and fire giants. Yes, comes basalt ravager. Ooh, uh, this is three in a red for a creature giant wizard at uncommon. It's a four two. When basalt ravager enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to any target where X is the greatest number of creatures you control that have a creature type in common. I love this giant. Oh, so like you're just trying to get you know it's a giant. So maybe you're trying to get a bunch of giants into play, yep. and then this will come down and deal a bunch of damage to something. I love it. Maybe you have a bunch of wizards, because that's what you're into. Pretty great. And this art is super cool. It looks like a mountain has come alive. Yeah, this is really neat. I, I love it on rate. 4-2 for four mana in limited. Yeah. Excellent. Thumbs up. Plus, it's like kind of like a flame tongue kavu a little yeah. bit, potentially. I, it definitely feels like it's got that vibe to it. Yeah. Because it could... Like, maybe it's only one if you have no other creatures. Yeah. But if you have just one other giant, then it's two damage to something. Which, that can kill a lot of creatures. Yeah, and it's any target as well, by the way. So oh, yeah. you, you can, can just go face. You go face with this. You could take down a planeswalker if yeah. you needed to. Whatever um, you got to do, get it done. And I love this tribal mechanic here in Call Time, which is, of course, a tribal set. Um, yeah. And remember last time we had giants as a tribe that we were drafting? No. This was a long time ago. So this would be when we were drafting stuff like... This would be the first Modern Masters. The first Modern it Masters. It was the very first Modern yep. Masters. And that was so fun. So long ago. I loved it. Yes. It was a really good time. Yeah. So... Oh, that, and it, I love this little person for scale in this. Yeah. <laughs> like this giant is not just like, oh, I'm a giant who's twice as tall as a no. person. No. It's like 600 this is times as tall. a real giant. This giant is huge. Fire in the belly. Yes. I love it. Um, and then to balance out the fire, we have the ice, which is Frostpire Arcanist. Love it. Four and a blue for a creature giant wizard, uncommon, a two five. Okay. This spell costs one less to cast if you control a giant or a wizard. All right. So it could four cast mana. four instead of five. When Frostpire Arcanist enters the battlefield, search your library for an instant or sorcery card with the same name as the card in your graveyard, reveal it. Put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Okay, so nice. that's a super cool effect. Yeah. And what it makes me think of is something a little strange for giants. We think of giants as these big, boomy cards that just want to deal damage like we just saw with our yeah. fire giant. But this one makes me think that giants, well, he's also a wizard, by yeah. the way, giant wizard, um, this is kind of more of a weird sort of big creatures plus spells archetype. Yeah. Like, well, that's a, like classic blue red, right? Blue red. Yep, exactly. Blue red is all about those spells. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm super excited. This is a very cool card. I also love this art. Yes. Of like this giant, hold, like doing some sort of magic. Some giant magic. Some giant magic. And you got to love the booty shot of this frost pie yeah. arc. Yep. Looking back, the classic pose, looking yeah, back over your shoulder. Over the shoulder. <laughs> Looking, I mean, look, this this Arcanist has obviously still been going to leg day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> really, like, powerful Oof. legs. Those legs could kick down the sun. Yeah. And perhaps have. Kick down the sun. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kick down kick the down sun. Kick down the sun. But yeah, this is cool. I don't, you know, do you, I just don't associate big creatures with um, a blue red spells archetype. So this is kind of cool. Yeah, I really like it. Yeah. And you know, these giants are big, but they're not right. Like we saw the other one. Four big two. power. Yep. Little toughness. Yeah. This one is little power, big toughness. Yep. So it's not like they're just big, big. <gasps> now I see why they're showing off the booty. <laughs> it's a two five. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, It yeah. all makes sense. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So very, very cool cards. Um, thank you so much to Wizards for giving us yes. these free previews. Thank you so much. These are pretty cool. Excited to play with them in limited. Um, they're they're going to be excellent limited inclusions for yes. sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. You're going to want to pick these uncommons and try and draft that giant archetype absolutely 
Also, thank you to Wizards for this box of swag we That's got from right. Call Time that we're going to do an unboxing here on the show. Let's see it happen. Okay, so we got a box that looks like an amp. Yeah. Um, and oh, bubble, oh, wrap. bubble wrap. The best part of any box. Yeah. The bubble wrap. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, if you're driving, that's yeah. not your tires blowing out. We're popping don't bubble worry, wrap. Don't worry. Don't um, worry. We've got a little all access pass. All right. We've you got all access. Get back, get back get backstage. backstage. <laughs> this is my favorite part of what's in the box. Some people have previewed yes. this on Twitter, which is a cassette tape. Oh, I love it. And we, we opened this and we're like, um, how do you play this? We don't have a cassette tape. Nobody has a cassette Nobody tape. Nobody has one of these my anymore. My car had one. But don't worry. It's a USB. <laughs> it's a USB. I also love that. Cool. Um, excellent. We've got a poster, mm. which we'll for sure put up in the office. Oh, look at that. <gasps> look at the it's sword. sword. <laughs> I love the reflections of the, like, I don't know what they call them. I can't remember. The, like the northern lights happening yeah, in this sword. The Aurora. So this is a little um, card here that says the debut is Thursday, January 7th. Yeah, we saw that we on Twitch.tv slash magic. It happened, happened already. Happened already. Um, was pretty, pretty metal. What's this? Oh, we got a call time bag. Yeah. All right. Oh, and a shirt. Check it out. Call time backpack. Oh, yeah. Call time shirt. Call time shirt. You know, I got to say the call time designs, like you could see this in any store. Yeah. <laughs> it's really neat. Very hot topic. Very hot topic, <laughs> which we've mentioned in conjunction with call time before, I think. Yes. <laughs> nice. Gonna, I'm going to wear this shirt. All right. <laughs> Megan's going to wear this shirt. Oh, yeah. I want to play this tape. <laughs> I wonder. It's probably songs, right? We'll find know. out. We'll find out. We'll update you, everybody, know. on what yeah, was we'll on play, this tape. Play the tape. Play the tape. Play, play the, the tape. tape. So, yeah, a call time. In case you missed it, on January 7th, they had a big release event on twitch.tv slash magic. You can go check out the VODs if you mm -hmm. didn't if you didn't see it. Jimmy Wong hosted it, and we found out a whole bunch of information about call time. Saw a bunch of new cards. A metal yeah. band played in the background. Metal riffs. <laughs> Uh, don't don't annotate that. That was terrible music. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> talk to a bunch of designers who helped create the set, which was pretty cool. Um, Maria. Yes. What is your favorite thing that we've learned about Call Time? Okay. So I think the idea of Call Time is pretty cool. Yeah. When they were talking about what it is, um, so it's not just one place, right? No. It's 10 that we know about for now, different realms that exist in a cosmic soup <laughs> that were kind of like, they're kind of like hanging off like fruit from a giant world tree. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of weird monsters that live in the cosmic soup. Yes. Everything's ruled by gods. There's 10 different realms. The realms all have different creature types, largely that inhabit them. And they can pass through and say hi to each other in other realms, but it's pretty hard. Like you need to have magic. Yeah. You got to have a weird God weapon. You've got, somebody has got to open a portal. Yeah, you got to have a boat. You got to have a boat. Mm -hmm. um, and so like that idea I think is really cool, but it was a lot to take in when I first heard about all of this. I was like, wait, wait, yeah. 10 realms. I, I have to memorize the names of these places like <laughs> yeah it's a information lot. overload but maria it is maybe the closest i mentioned last time that this is maybe the closest we'll ever get to a huey lewis in the news yes accurate set That's this is accurate. also maybe the closest we'll ever get to having a set in the <laughs> blind, blind eternities <laughs> You're right. The weird cosmic soup with the is, cosmos monsters is yeah. like the Blind Eternities. It's their own version of the mm. mini Blind Eternities. I see you, Mark Rosewater. So I see you. Here you go. Thank you. It's kind of the two sets that you wanted <laughs> together. Combined into one. I How shouldn't about complain that? about 10 realms. There's like 10 guilds on Ravnica. I should just get over it. <laughs> Come That's on. true, but the, they're usually split. They've always been split yeah. across two split sets. Two sets. This is so this is a lot of new stuff yeah. being birthed into the magic universe mm -hmm. with call time. What about you? Um. Oh man, I like a lot of it. I think. I think my favorite part is learning that um, Tybalt is impersonating the <laughs> the mono black god, Valky, yeah. god of lies. Yes, is on one side, and then it's Tybalt, cosmic imposter, on the uh, on the other side. I think that's my favorite part. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Tybalt Wood, number Tybalt, one. Tybalt, exactly like Tybalt Wood. But we, you know, we talked about on the show. We said, will he finally get a planeswalker card that is like good? So has that occurred? Okay, it's seven mana. 
<laughs> which is a lot. That is a very but do expensive you know what? We've talked walker. a little bit about like is Tybalt trying to like impersonate Nicol Bolas and be the next big bad? Yeah. And this card kind of says yes because okay. it reminds me of like some big bad Nicol Bolas cards, you know? All right. Uh, five black red for the Tybalt side of this card. Yeah. Legendary Planeswalker Tybalt. Um, as Tybalt enters the battlefield... Oh, hold on. Let me. <laughs> this yes. one. As Tybalt enters the battlefield, you get an emblem with you may play cards exiled with Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. Okay. Plus two, exile the top card of each player's library. Minus three, exile target artifact or creature. Minus eight, exile all cards from all graveyards. Add red, red, red. Yeah. So, like, it's, it is expensive. But it does do a lot. This card is yeah. extremely powerful. but And you don't only have to play those cards that turn. Sure. Right? Because you get the emblem that says you can do it whenever. Yeah, that's true. So it's a lasting effect. And if you think about it, people play Eugene. Yeah, to that's be fair, true. Eugene the Spirit Dragon can come down and like wipe everything. Yes. But if you've been playing a black red like or some kind of um Grixis control maybe, sure. then this is what you want at the end to maybe come down, take care of the most recent thing that they've played. Yeah. Or if you've managed to land it on a clear board, then you can just be like, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna draw two cards essentially. I like the design of this a lot. Uh the fact that Tybalt is thieving from the other player and then using it himself is, yeah, is you pretty know, cool. Pretty good. And then it's nice, right? I can see this going in decks because it has this cheaper side. Yep. Uh one in a black for a two one, Valky, God of Lies, a legendary creature god. Uh when Valky enters the battlefield, each opponent reveals their hand. For each opponent, exile a creature card they revealed this way until Valky leaves the battlefield. Cool. X choose a creature card exiled with Valky with converted mana cost x Valky becomes a copy of that card all right so, so like it's it's pretty cool it does a lot of different things it doesn't just exile a card like a kite sail freebooter right. until it goes away right um it exiles a creature and then it can become that creature later on if they haven't dealt with it flavor city yes because that's what tybalt is doing here becoming Valky god of lies never have i seen such a gulf well i suppose i've seen it before but two mana <laughs> seven mana i mean Woo. Both ends of the spectrum here. Yeah. Big time. Just like a nice, a nice little like early disruption. Yep. Creature to get in the way of things. Hey, and Grixis then, Control, you you brought that up. That makes me definitely think that that could be in the future for this card. Like maybe so. Maybe even straight Rakdos Control mm -hmm. could be? Maybe. Question mark? Maybe. Yeah. So Tibble, so. the big villain of this story, perhaps the big villain for many eons to come in Magic. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, tons of awesome cards have been previewed so, so far in yes. Call Time. So many. Ongoing. Yeah. Um, um, we have Snow, oh, which I, we didn't know. Like, did we know that for sure last time? I don't think we did. No. Uh, this is... It's, snow. Snow is here, 100% confirmed. Yes. Um, so Snow is a super type. Yep. Um, which means that it goes, like, in lands, it goes before the dash. Yep. For instance, in creatures, it goes before the dash. Uh, and while it doesn't technically do anything on its own, it can be referred to by other cards. Like, I love this card. Oh, so cool. Frostbite. Oh, I love it. Single red for a snow instant. Frostbite deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. If you control three or more snow permanents, it deals three damage instead. I love it. So snow cool. instance. Are you kidding me? This is great. Yes. Snow is one of my favorite things to play with in Magic. The last time we got to play around with it was in a, a weird master set. Which mm -hmm. one was it? Ugh. Oh, I don't know. My remember. brain is melting in on itself. <laughs> but it was a very fun draft format, and I loved drafting the snow deck. Yeah. Um, and there's things that care about snow in this set, which are really, really cool cards, and the yeah. snow lands themselves. You get one in every pack for sure, at least. And there's snow duels. <gasps> so if you want some cool dual lands, hello, snow duels now exist. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, they've got a new frame to help differentiate the snow lands from other normal lands. They're icy. They're icy. Yeah. I I think this, I'm not a huge fan of this frame because the colors are very diluted. Um, I wonder if it'll be a little weird to look at on the battlefield. It remains to be seen. <laughs> I think... Uh, you know what? I think it's going to look cool. In foil, I think this will be just BA. Yeah. Um, because it'll be super shiny. Um, 
But yeah, I'm really, really, really stoked for snow to come back. Yeah. Um, do you want to? Do you want me to talk about one of my favorite snow cards yes. that's been previewed? Okay, let me go find it. Please um, do. Um, in the meantime, we can talk about a different mechanic that I feel like is up your alley. Yes. <laughs> and that is. What? Which one? Boast? Yes. Boast. Big yes. time. Boast. It seems like your jam because you well, got to have yeah, attack as a attack. creature. <laughs> <laughs> Should we find a boast card? Oh, yeah. If you go down a little bit, there was the rare, the rare big bad, big bad demon. Big bad demon boaster. Yeah. Big bad demon boaster, <laughs> which is my metal name. What do you do? You know, I, I'm a big bad demon boaster. But what instrument do you play the band? Oh, uh, cymbals. <laughs> <laughs> Not even drums. No, just cymbals. Just, just, just cymbals. cymbals. Varagoth Blood Sky Sire. Can I say, this alternate art is the best alternate art I think I've ever seen. It's it insane. is very metal. Oh, it's so good. It's really great. Uh, done by Ian Miller. A plus. It's, oh, it's, yeah, it's spooky. Just a red, pure red background with a bunch yeah. of, I don't know what's going on, slaughtering. Much slaughtering yep. in the foreground. Um, like two in a black legendary creature, demon rogue, two, three with death touch boast one in a black target play player searches their library for a card, then shuffles their library and put that puts that card on top of it. Activate this ability only if this creature attacks this turn and only once each turn. Yeah. So that's pretty, pretty good. Let's talk about boast like yeah. as a mechanic. So encouraging you to attack, of course, which is normally what you want to be doing with your creatures, <laughs> especially in games of limited says you. <laughs> Well, I said creatures, not just what you want to be doing. But if you play a creature, I don't know, you probably want to attack with it. I mean, Ugh. blocking is for chumps. That's what they say. Um, but <laughs> what I, what is so cool about this is that you can activate it any time that you've attacked. So next turn, I can do it again. Put mm -hmm. something else on top of my deck that I want to draw. Whoop, whatever. It doesn't matter what kind of card it is. Do it Put again it on and top. again and do again. Do it again as long as you can keep attacking. Um yeah, I have it, yep. it also has death touch to help it get through. Also, what I like about this, right, is it's not something that you can activate only as a sorcery. Yeah. So even if you attack with this and they block so you're going to lose this creature, you can activate. Yep. Because now during the blockers phase, you have attacked with this creature. It was it attacked. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what. So you're still going to get something out of it. Yeah. I think this is really cool. Um Boast. Does this make you think of boasting? I guess they've attacked. So they're yeah, like, they've attacked I and they're attacked. like, guess what I did? I, I attacked. Did it. <laughs> I attacked. Did you know there's a god of boasting in call time? Oh. <laughs> That's their job. They're just there to be like, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. I pray to the god of boasting, please. I need a good story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but you were talking about one of your favorite snow snow things. Snow that things. Has I've gotta find I've got to find These it, though. These are a few of my, my favorite, favorite snows. snows. Here it is. Oh, yeah, of course. There's a few of them that are really cool because it kind of can't not be cool when it's snow stuff. But anyway, <laughs> this is Morite of the Frost. Sorry if I'm butchering these names um legendary snow creature shapeshifter this is a changeling it's a zero zero power and toughness you may have more right of the frost enter the battlefield as a copy of a permanent you control except it's legendary and snow in addition to its <laughs> other types and it's and oh, okay and if it's a creature it enters with two additional plus one plus one counters on it and has changeling Ooh, just a bunch of stuff wow yeah okay so i think this is cool not only is the art epic yeah it's um, really cool art this this changeling snow <laughs> can be anything which is really kind of i don't know it feels very snowy to me to be drifting in and out of whatever it needs to be at any given moment yeah like, like someone snow. has used it to build a snowman but now then someone else uses it to make a snow angel oh that's a really good way to put it <laughs> look at there's a spirit of alder guard it's a snow creature it's a bear spirit a bear spirit it's a spirit bear three and a green for an oh four when spirit of the alder guard enters the battlefield search your library for a snow land card reveal it put it into your hand and shuffle your library planet spirit of the alder guard gets plus one plus oh for each other snow permanent yes. you control yes 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 a nice. plus give me all the snow lands give me all the snow stuff playing yes. playing yes. the snow bear yes. it's not a tutu i'll look i'll overlook that <laughs> because it's so cool yeah snow 
Very cool. Um, I've, I have loved all of these sagas that we're seeing <sighs> just because one, they're all gorgeous. Um, two, I love like the, the story that they're hinting at. Yes. Um, for one, forging the Tyrite sword. This art is gorgeous. It's so cool. One red, white, uh, Chapters one and two create a treasure token. Treasures are bad. Yep. Three, search your library for a card named Halvar, God of Battle, or an equipment card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Like, it's just cool. Sagas are great. They said they're perfect for this set, which they yes. obviously are. Uh, the Trickster God's Heist. Ugh. Like, oh, this art also? Gosh, this art. It's I like love a wood art. carving. Ugh. I don't even know what's happening, but it's so good. I love it. In terms of if it's a wood Two carving. blue black. Uh, chapter one, you may exchange control of two target creatures. Yes. Two, you may exchange control of two target non-basic permanent set share card type. Three, target player loses three life and you gain three life. Yes. So just like swap things. Swap trades. Things. Yeah. The art of this is somebody taking a sword and stabbing them in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like you I do. Mean, that's the, it was, it was a pretty simple heist. This is the way. <laughs> pretty simple heist. I took, they, I took, took his sword and, and I stabbed him with it. Binding of the old gods is the um, wood carving that oh, is. amazing. Whoa. <sighs> Whoa. What? <laughs> I, uh, Victor no, Adam tweeted about this and was like, this was the hardest thing that I've, I think ever had to, had to make. Yeah. Um, and it has beautiful, like purple flowers <sighs> at the top of it. It's so Cool. Um, Saga art. Two black green. Destroy target. Chapter one. Destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Great. Playing two. It. Search your library for a forest card. Put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Three creatures you control gain death touch until end of turn. This is an un- uncommon. What? I will draft one million. I mean, of these. like, are you kidding me? Chapter one, you're like, yep. I will play that, obviously. It. And then like, I get yes. chapters two and three. You also get a forest. You also get death touch till end of turn. What kind of card is this? What oh, is this card? I, what is this? <laughs> I feel like I will be pretty mad when players play this against me. I mean, me. like, it's just unfair. Yeah. <laughs> so many things happening. Ooh, another really cool one. We saw the blue god. Oh, yeah. Um, All run. Or one of the blue gods, because I think there's two green ones. Maybe it's just a green legendary. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, Alrund, God of the Cosmos, three blue blue for a legendary creature, God. Alrund gets plus one plus one for each card in your hand and each foretold card you own in exile. Ooh, okay, we'll talk about foretold after yeah. this. At the beginning of your end step, choose a card type, then the re- reveal the top two cards of your library, put all cards of the chosen type into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Just, just cool. And then, yes, the other side, Haka Whispering Raven. I love it. Um, because he has a raven. Yes, uh, no. Legendary creature bird flying whenever Haka Whispering Raven deals combat damage to a player, return it to its owner's hand, then scry two. I love it. Flexible. Great. Excellent. Whenever you, whatever oh. effect you need, they have it. Whatever. <laughs> yes. Do you want this great god at Mythic or do you want this bird that'll help you scry, that'll attack? Oh, uh, and then it goes back to your hand so you can cast it as the god. Yep. And draw cards. I yeah. just, uh, this card is really cool. All Run's deal is that he went into the cosmos to fight all of the gods because he wanted their knowledge. Oh. And looks like he got some of it. Yeah, he got at least some. You can see the cosmos kind of still on him <laughs> in the... Uh, Hey, you have some cosmos you on got you. A little, you got a little cosmos on you. Cosmos. You have to, you have to make sure you, you, you know, you shower after you <laughs> yeah. travel the cosmos. <laughs> it get dirty out there. Mm-hmm. So we said we we're going to talk about Foretold, which is the other new mechanic uh, yes. coming with Call Time, which is a kind of a cool mashup of two mechanics, at least in my books, that we've seen before in Magic. Well, like, isn't everything just a different version of Flashback? Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's what we say. <laughs> but uh, this one, I feel, is a combination of Morph and Suspend. Yes. So we have cards like Augury Raven, three and a blue flying for a three three foretell one in a blue during your turn you may pay two generic mana and exile this card from your hand from face down cast it on a later turn for its foretell cost cool so you can foretell cards for two generic yep just put them face down so it's kind of like morph except they're not creatures they're just in exile face down yep and then you cast them for cheaper later on question can i cast this on my opponent's turn i i don't think so that wouldn't seem right, would it? No. But there's spells with foretell. 
Yeah, I bet if it's an instant, then you can foretell it at, at instant speed. Rules, Judge! <laughs> I mean, we've got to get Judge Robin here. Oh, yeah, Judge for Robin! Our call time, for our call time episode. I'm sure they've said before, like, maybe I yeah. just made that up that they're on instance, but I'm pretty sure there's a counter spell. Yeah, here it oh, is. Oh, yeah, counter Saw target it coming. Spell. <laughs> one name. blue blue instant counter target spell foretell for one in a blue yeah yeah uh, so i feel like yeah obviously it says you cast can do this. it on a later turn yeah I, I mean i think i don't think that it would give stuff flash flash no that i mean i wouldn't think it would either i'm just yeah. like anyway you just got to make sure i just got to double you know, check we'll get judge robin here do you, you want a counter spell judge. just sitting there for two mana always how does that make you feel perfect <laughs> <laughs> makes me feel a plus a plus it really does yeah i think foretell and boast are both um really really good mechanics yeah um, um i love oh i just love i love a, a lot um oh we have asika god of the tree nominated for best art 2021 oh coming so up. good gorgeous gorge art um she has whatever their version of the aurora is like the all cosmos around. yeah um one green green for a legendary creature god uh one for vigilance tap add one mana of any color other legendary creatures you control have vigilance and tap add one mana of any color seek is gonna be the nonsense card of the set <laughs> because people are going to try and do this yes it's for sure gonna you know the other happen. side the planar bridge or excuse me the prismatic bridge <laughs> yes the prismatic bridge <laughs> i'm white, not talking about thor no uh white blue black red green for a legendary enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order Great. Someone please I want make to this cast happen. This. Make this I want to cast this card. We need to see it in your pre-release happen. Yes. Please. Please. Tweet at us. Please. At <laughs> Julie Shippen, need to see Oh, it. just, you know, so much, so much. Oh, wait, go up a little bit? Yeah. Okay, go up a little bit more. Um, Cosmos Charger. Will you click on that? Oh, this is a that beautiful one, horse. That, that pony. That pony um, doe. Horse spirit. Here we go. Foretelling cards from your hand costs one less and can be done on any player's turn. Oh, I guess that doesn't talk about unforetelling them, though. No. Or foretolding them? Foretolding them. <laughs> you foretell it when you put it face down and you foretold it. You have you foretold it. it. Yeah. We also have a nominee for cutest card um, 2021, which I'm going to say right now. Yeah. I don't know how any card will beat this. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it is pretty absurd. <laughs> We're in January of 2021 and yeah. I'm like calling it now. You never Just know, calling Maria. It. You never know what might come and steal your heart later this year, but this card is absurdly cute. Okay. When I saw this, I legitimately squealed. Asika's Chariot. You all know it was coming. When it enters the battlefield, create two, two, two green cat creature tokens. Whenever it attacks, create a token that's a copy of target token you control. Crew four, it's a vehicle. It's a four, four for four mana. And oh. there's a cute little fluffykins, kitty moonchkin, sitting in this little chariot, ready oh, to get pulled. Oh, it's so cute. Take me on a trip. I feel like the cats are supposed to be pulling the chariot, but like while Asika's away, they've just like curled up and they're like, no. If Asika can get cats to pull her in a chariot, she's she is my god that I pay tribute to. You've done it. You've done the impossible. Yeah, you you have what you need in this world. You have you know you've accomplished everything. And taking a nap. Oh. Norwegian forest cats are so beautiful. Yes, it's so cute. Ah, oh, just so much. So much of this set looks so cool. Um, I love these Valkyries. They are just like spooky, cool, these baller angels. angels. So cool. Um, Eradicator Valkyrie. Two black black for a 4-3 angel berserker at Mythic. Flying lifelink hexproof from Planeswalkers. Boast mm. one in a black, sacrifice a creature. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or Planeswalker. Nice. Like, ugh. Just running around killing everything. I like it because they're up there. They're at the top of the world tree and they're mm -hmm. like hanging out feasting in quote unquote Valhalla. And they're like, you want to come up here and come to an eternal feast? Don't worry about it. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Hey, don't <laughs> you worry. Can come, you can come I'm hang out. It's definitely going to work out for you. Okay. <laughs> don't worry. Do you want to get definitely going to work out for you. and come to a party? Check it out. <laughs> so we talked about there's there's 10 mini planes 10 mini planes 10 worlds realms 10 realms that's what they call them that's right yeah drifting around in the cosmos hanging out in the goop hanging out in the goop 
Yeah. Um, and then I love this, but you can see like the world tree is where they all mm-hmm. are happening. Yeah. And like you can see the branches of the world tree in the realm. I think that's so cool. Which is pretty cool. Let's go over these um, realms, by the way, just so everybody knows like which one. Yeah. Which, which, which because there's different um, creatures that are associated with, with each one of these realms, creature types. Yeah. That kind of rule over these realms and they're different color pairs. So get ready for this draft null that, yeah. you, that you're going to want going in on okay. the 28th. Okay. Number one, Axe Guard, dwarves, red, white. Oh, yeah. Classic red, white dwarves. And they smell. They smell great. <laughs> they smell great. They smell like a teenage boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bredegard, humans, green, white. Yeah, there's a lot of info on Bredegard up right now on Daily MTG. They're yeah. going to put the rest of the nine realms up there later. But if you want a deep dive, and I mean a deep dive into what's yes. going on in Bredegard, they've got it up there. Um, Naughty Old. <laughs> great. <laughs> Which is the trolls, red, green. Love it. Love it. A, a plus. Uh, Immersturm, which is demons, black, red. Spooky. Yes. Istfel is the home of the spirits, which are, of course, white, blue. Yes. Carfel, uh, which is home of the Draugr, blue, black, undead Viking zombies. Yeah. And this one, um, I wanted to just call out quickly um, that it was a one that was previewed recently as to this recording. Draugr yeah. Necromancer, which is a zombie cleric. Yeah. I'm sorry, but this art is also fantastic. This is a snow creature zombie cleric. If a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile that card with an ice counter on it. Instead, you may cast spells from one cards and exile your opponent's own with ice counters on them. And you may spend ma- spend mana from snow sources as though it were mana of any color to cast the spells. It's a 4 4 4 Great. This card is excellent. Great card. And that art, um, you can see like a close-up of it that yeah. the artist tweeted out is in incredible <laughs> i love it yes um there's litjara which is home of the shapeshifters Ugh. green blue i love the, like the one that we saw yep we've got skemfar which is home of the elves these are black green they're wood and shadow elves and they used ah. to be the ruling gods oh before they were booted before the scody family came in yeah <laughs> which is the scody <laughs> family <laughs> sounds like an italian mob family yeah I can't get over it. Uh, the Skem... Oh, wait, we just said Skem... Bar- Starnheim, which is home of the Valkyries, which are white, black. And Sirtland, which is home of the Giants, which are blue, red, just like the ones yeah. we previewed. Fire and Frost Giants. So cool. Love it. So those Love are the 10 it. realms, the 10 color pairs that you're going to want to be drafting. Mm-hmm. Um, what a fertile land for <laughs> more magic sets in the future. Yes. And they even alluded to it in one of their articles, like, here's the 10 that we know of right now. Oh. So call time, I think, really ripe for returning. I'm like, we haven't even, it hasn't even come out. It and I'm has, like, yeah. We're going to return. Um, and they haven't, you know, obviously a Viking Norse themed plane had been something that wizards had been wanting to do for a long time, but they were like, oh, is it too like Ice Age? And so they waited, 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 waited. And finally, here it is. And I'm like, there's already so much that we can yeah. go back here for a second time around. For sure. Um, before we get into story time, yeah. I just want to touch on one of the cards because it's going to come up. Uh, Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. This is a Phyrexian Praetor. And for this is the first time I think that Phyrexian has been a creature type oh really yes uh four green green trample haste it's a six six if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player put twice that many of Mm -hmm. each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead if an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player they put half that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead round it down I, I have to say spooky to see a phyrexian yeah and they don't know how it got there Right? It's not a planeswalker. But watsy has been dropping hot clues like breadcrumbs about Phyrexian stuff for a little while now. Yeah. Here's the first big clue of something that's going on. Uh, that they're running around somewhere. Also, remember this. Mark Rosewater, in his article preview in Call Time, like, look out for these things. Yeah. One of them was poison counters. Yeah. So I think there's more than just Verinclex hanging out here in Call Time. Uh-oh. He said something about poison. That's true. Did he not? He did. Hmm. So um, that brings us very neatly to uh, episode one travelers of the magic story for call time. Great. So there's a couple of, like this is like the main arc of the story. Okay. There's also another set like another pair of stories about Nico Eris. I think that came out starting the day after this one. Okay. So this one 
right now, first, just this episode one, and then we'll come back to the other okay. stuff in the future. Great. Uh, so in this story, we find out that uh, Kaya is here, which we knew. Yes. Um, but Kaya has been sent to this plane uh, to help hunt this monster that she doesn't know about, and she doesn't know who has sent her. Oh. But it's someone who has access to a bunch of different kinds of money from a bunch of different planes, because that's how they paid her. And so she is traveling with a set of people called the Omen Seekers. Uh, and Not the Omen Speakers. No, not the <laughs> Omen Speakers. The Omen Seekers. Okay. And they're kind of like adventure. They're in search of adventure. So they're kind of warriors because they will fight if they have to. Great. But mostly they're just looking for new things to like learn and experience experience new stuff i love that they're like kaya look here's a pile of money this yeah. is how, you're not well, gonna not do them it. they i mean whoever hired whoever it is kaya. yeah exactly whoever <gasps> mysterious um, so they arrive at this village of people um and the village of people is has been having just people disappear right like from their village in the night and they don't know and no one goes into the forest anymore there's this like forest near them mm. uh and they're like please help us uh with these you know, with disappearances, what, with these disappearances. <laughs> exactly. Um, and Inga Rune Eyes is one of the Omen Seekers. Um, she's a card that we've seen. Great name. Yes. Inga Rune Eyes. Uh, and she is kind of like a prof. She can see things. Is this Rune Eyes two words? Um, it's I, it's hyphenated. Oh, Rune Eyes. Ooh. I know. Right. <laughs> um, so anyways, she can see into the future. Or not the future, but she can see the way it talks about it is she can see what's happening anywhere that the omen seekers that she knows have walked. Oh, so she has like sight wherever th those people have gone. Cool. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so they uh, Kaya's with them, and there's also this um, old dude who's also in charge of them called what's his name? Um, I'll name him. Oh, okay. Torgar. It's that's the not great his name. Big knees. That's that's definitely not his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a mystery science theater reference. Okay. Finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see. Oh, Aussie. His name is Aussie. Okay. Anyways, and he has like a raven on his shoulder. Oh, I've got a raven on my shoulder. Some yeah. shrimp on the bobby. I'm Aussie. Yep. Okay. That's him. That's. I'm here to ruin that's story time. Voice. That's my so part. Anyways, <laughs> they're walking in the forest and they're like, oh, there's no other animals around. Um, and Kaya's like, oh, are there squirrels in this in, <gasps> on this plane? And they're like, yes, there are squirrels. And there's also Toski, messenger of the gods, who runs around the cosmos delivering news. News and Toski is cute and good. Very good. He doesn't say that about Toski, but we all know it. <laughs> and Toski is cute and good. Just Toski is cute and good. <laughs> Said that in there. Um, so, anyways, and then um, Aussie's Raven comes back and he's like, "Oh, the Raven has told me where we should go look." And they arrive at this cave, and they walk. They're walking in the cave, and they see some. They see some like stuff on the wall that looks like kind of like mineral veins or ore, but it's kind of like silvery. Ooh. Spoiler alert, probably Phyrexian oil. Oh my but god. But they don't know it. And Kaya is just like, nobody Watch touched out. that stuff. Yeah, she's like, don't touch it. I have a bad feeling about it, even though she doesn't know what it is. Hey man, Phyrexian's always going through caves with their oil. <laughs> Think about Dominaria. Remember that story? Yeah. They're in caves. Yes. Phyrexian oil. Uh, anyways, anyway. so it's like this like web of like oily stuff. And then they come to to this giant cavern where a, a spooky, disgusting monster, <laughs> huge, spooky, disgusting monster um, is like eat, kind of eating. It describes it. It's like not really eating, but it has its like arms like pushed into its most recent prey and it's kind of feeding on it in a way. Mm, Anyways, that's um, how I and they eat. don't know what it is, but spoiler alert, it's foreign clex. <laughs> Um, the way they describe it, yep, right, is yep. like, it's Warren Clex. And they try to fight it, um, but it is going pretty bad. And, like, Kaya uses, like, their weapons, when they hit it, like, it just heals itself, basically. The ghost blade axes? Not go with their normal axes. Weapons. Oh, her normal weapons. Okay. Um, and then Kaya uses her ghost blade axes to cut off one of its arms. Okay. And that actually works. All it right. like falls off and crumbles into ash. <gasps> but then it takes one of the people, like it kills one of the omen seekers. Yeah. And it like 
fuses its body into itself oh, and like sick. engulfs it and then just regrows the arm that she had cut off. <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and Inga's no. trying to help her by doing like some stasis magic, but she can't hold it for that long because it's this giant Phyrexian. And Kaya can do this cool thing when she's fighting where she can phase out parts of her body, right? Whoa. Because um, she's kind of also, she's like she's part d- ghost. Isn't she part ghost or she's full like, ghost? She's part ghost? I don't know exactly how the wording on that works but anyways <laughs> point is she can phase out parts of her body wow um but then uh well you know they're they're tiring and they're fighting it and then it turns out that Ossie is actually the blue god and he reveals himself oh raven man raven man is the blue god nice classic like Norse god mythology. Sometimes yeah. they JK. just walk around pretending to be people. <laughs> but I mean, actually, it's one of the gods. I would. <laughs> um, and he like he like puts up this like barrier, and then Vorinclex runs runs away into like one of the webs of like oil. Okay. And just like Disappears. like into oh, it. Sick. And Kaya is like, um, it's Alder. Is he's the blue god, right? Yeah. Uh yes. All runned. All runned. That there you go. Um it's all runned and he's like used his power to like save her even though she was starting to finally get the upper hand and had cut another an, away another one of its limbs with yeah. her ghost blade. And she's like, I can do this. Um and anyways he, she's like, hey, you got in the way of me being able to kill that monster that I'm here to kill, <laughs> you know, and I've already been paid for doing this job, so I got to finish it. Uh, and everyone's like, what do you mean it's gone from this place? And she's like, I got to find it somewhere here on this plane on okay. call time. Um, and Allrund is just like, okay, I'm going to send you my cosmos boat so that, <laughs> so that you can travel <laughs> through the cosmos and look for it. Um, it'll be back in the port of, you know, the little village where you all docked when you get back. Sweet. So she got a sweet Cosmos boat on yeah. steel too? Yeah, so she's going to use the Cosmos boat to keep looking for what she what they don't know is a Phyrexian. Yeah. But is this Phyrexian Vorinclex that's got here and is wrecking havoc, and there's Phyrexian oil in this cave. And it's probably going to go to the other realms and stuff, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think the idea when it traveled into, when it, like, into its Phyrexian <laughs> oil in the cave Excellent. is that it could go, you know, <gasps> potentially somewhere else. Vorinclex, no! Oh, stop absorbing me. Yes. Um, and Inga is like, oh, Alrund is like, hey, I feel like this is a bad omen. Guess what? It is. Duh. Um, I fear a Doomscar approaches, uh, which is like their their word for a time of a collision of the realms. Oh, no. When all of the realms that are, you know, separate on the world tree collide together, um, inevitably comes war and chaos, a time of great suffering. Wow. And Kaya is like, oh, this was supposed to be easy and not at all like that mess on Ravnica. (laughs) When are we going to get a story about an easy job that one of these planeswalkers has? Yes, exactly. Um, So anyways. Wow. uh, And it's not his boat. It's like the boat of it's the boat of somebody else. It's the boat of Kosima. Ah, Kosima, who who was a god, I mean, uh, one of the creatures in the soup and then became part of the gods ruling family right now. Nice. Fun fact. Yeah. So anyways. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a, a banger of a story to start the set off with. Um, I think Kaya's job's pretty cool. Yeah. You want this pile of gold? Fight a monster. Fight a monster. And Kaya was like, yeah. Yeah. And she's also like, oh, I guess I'm like, quote unquote, a good person now or whatever. (laughs) It's very much her vibe in this. She's like, I guess I'm doing the right thing or whatever. I have to go fight this absorbing Uh, spider. uh, Cool. Uh. Um, Anyways, it was pretty cool. I have to say, like, the writing in this one was was enjoyable. Excellent. Um, I really I liked it. Yep. Um, It was very engrossing to read. Uh, The descriptions of the monster of, you know, this Phyrexian were gross and spooky. Great. It was a cool fight. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend checking it out if that's at all up your alley. Yeah. And if not, we'll keep bringing you some story time with Megan. Yeah, over on Daily MTG, really mm-hmm. happy, like we've said before, to see the story coming back for free onto the website. And yeah. uh, to see some good writing in these stories, too, is always a huge thumbs up. Um, I'm looking forward to Cal Time big time Yeah, after everything that we've talked about today. Same. <sighs> it's going to be great. Snow. 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 <laughs> Snow. 
hey, guess what? If you're a fan of all this new Kaldheim art like we are, uh, get yourself some Ultra Pro gear because they have the tops way to celebrate magic art you love, putting it on boxes, putting yep. it on playmats, putting it on just about anything that you can use to supplement your magical life. Yeah, and the best part is is they already have it. They already it is already have in it. existence. Go get it now. Yeah, if you love oh. any of this stuff, I think Kaldheim is home to some of the most gorgeous art we've yeah. seen in magic in a while. Think, you know, thanks to that Aurora Borealis effect that we're getting from the mm-hmm. Cosmos World Tree situation. Um, oh. So I'm super excited to see some of this stuff that Ultra Pro has. You can get a chariot kitty. Oh my God, chariot, chariot kitty. kitty. I need it. Chariot kitty. Aren't chariot we all just kitty. a chariot kitty sometimes? Oh. At we the all best want moments to be. of our life. Yeah, yeah. Like if I could just be a chariot kitty for right just now. five minutes. Just, <laughs> please. <laughs> Ultra Pro has you covered. Check them out anywhere you buy your magical stuff at your local game store at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. They've got it all really high quality products with the best magic art, which, as you know, from listening to the show, is one of our favorite parts about the game. And yeah. a great way to celebrate that is by doing so with some of Ultra Pro's great gear. Yeah. Okay, that's this episode of Good Luck High Five. What an episode. I am what so stoked episode. for Call Time. So much Call Time. So much Call Time. Call Time top to bottom. Yeah. Side to side. And they have just done it with this set so far. I mean, it's not all out yet. We haven't played with it, no. but it's from a flavor perspective, mm-hmm. from an art and design perspective. This has got to be a win, at yeah. least from what we've seen so far. It is it is so cool. Super cool. I cannot wait to play it. Yeah, me too. Ugh. Um, it's... It's so cool. We're going to listen to this cassette tape. <laughs> yeah. Find out well, what's, you know on, what's it. on it. Um, by the way, last week we said that our buddy was going to come on and talk about going infinite on Arena and giving you some tips yeah. for being able to spend less money on the platform. Mm-hmm. So that's going to happen next week because yeah. all this call time stuff dropped and we wanted to talk about it with you. Yeah. Um, but that's going to be super cool if you're somebody that's like, I want to maximize my gems and my gold and how to best be able to do that on Arena. He's yeah. got all the answers for you there. The answer is don't do what I do, which is just <laughs> throw whatever I've got at whichever <laughs> draft I want to do at the moment. Not you always know, wise. You know, you know, sometimes no. there's a day for that. Sometimes there's a day for, you know, throwing all of your gold into a omniscience draft and being like, yep. why did I do this? Well, <laughs> well, because you did. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but also we're going to have Judge Rob coming on before yeah. the set is available to play. So we'll get all of the answers you have to various weird tricky cards and new mm-hmm. rules and stuff like that. So some really exciting shows coming up here for Good Luck High Five. Um, thank you again to everybody over on Patreon. Yeah. Patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. We'll give you a shout out at the top of the show if you become a new patron before our next episode. Um, thank you to Card Kingdom and yeah. Ultra Pro for always being awesome sponsors of our show. And yeah, we're recording here at our office again. Yay! We're so excited. Super happy to be back. Oh. Thankful to be living in Minnesota where cases have been going down. Um, unlike some parts of the world and country, yeah. um, which is kind of the opposite. So, yep. Well, uh, we're still keeping it generally real locked down. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us mm-hmm. for another week, making our office possible, all, all of our patrons. Um, yeah. I can't wait to see what Call Time has yeah. in store. Rock on, man. Rock on. on. <laughs> <laughs>